Hello everybody and welcome back and let us start off with the cross type scripting attack which is also I believe after the SQL injection one of the most common attacks found on the website applications. So what is the cross type scripting attack vulnerability? Well basically uh, your web browser is interpreter of code which uses HTML and script code for showing documents including texts, pictures and videos for example. Now what that means that uh, it basically allows users to interact with dynamic elements including search fields, hyperlinks, forms, video, audio controls and many other. Now besides the HTML code itself there is most likely going to be a script code that allows all of that now, the most commonly used script code would be the JavaScript and it is used to make uh, more your website or basically any website on the internet more dynamic. Now, why am I talking all of this? Well, basically, when user input is used to determine the script code and the input isn't filtered well, well enough, you get the, uh, the, you get the cross app scripting vulnerability. Now what I mean by that, well, for example, let's say you have a website and uh, basically what you, mm, when you click on something or when you type something in, a thing pops up on your screen or moves left from right on the website or basically anything that makes a website more dynamic to you that was caused by you can be used to make the cross type scripting vulnerability work there. It happens when script code is added in user input field and browser execu executes it as a code instead of some kind of data. For example, you uh, type in the user input in green and your screen turns green. It is basically some kind of interaction with the website. And if you type there a script code and uh, the user input isn't filtered, as in this SQL and command injection and XML injection, it can be uh, read as the script code. As I said, the mostly used script code is the JavaScript, uh, but it can also be some of the other, for example, such as the VBS scripts or any other script code. Now, the let me just open LeafPad right here before I continue talking about this, since this is a theoretical part where you need to understand uh, basically what am I saying. So, mm, the most common uh, XSS attack or cross site scripting, so basically XSS is the short for cross site scripting. Uh, the most common attack would include something like this. Uh, the attacker which performs the attack, so the attacker that performs the attack, the vulnerable web application, uh, the victim which uh, uh, uses web browser and some website that attacker wants to, for example, redirect. Let me just make this a proper English. So JavaScript can be used to redirect vulnerable websites and it is most commonly uh, what you will see so, for example, when, when you visit some kind of website, let's say you visit, again, an online shop for flowers, and you click on a specific link that leads you to that shop, and suddenly you are on some website that sells cars, for example. You will know that it was done with a redirection using, for example, JavaScript. Now, uh, since it is a uh, redirect from flowers to cars, it is most likely, it was most likely a part of the attack from some of the hacker that redirected it to his own website or to someone's website that paid him to do that. That is the most common thing that you will do and you uh, and someone as a victim that uses web browser he basically just goes to the web fl flower shop and uh, suddenly gets redirected to buy cars which makes no sense at all but it happens. Now, in order for us to show a simple uh, example of cross-site scripting, let us just go to our virtual machine. Let me just close it and open the login page once again. I'm not really sure how did I load it with this IP address since my OS virtual machine 
is in the dot one dot nine but it doesn't matter at the moment so what we want to do from here uh, we want to go to the dva dvwa so then we'll rob a web we can go once again on there and once you uh, go there it will lead you to the same page that we were before on with the sql injection and command injection this is taking a little bit slow let me just check out the ip address whether i type the correct one so I've configured that one that six, it should load it any second right now. Or yeah, I could put, I maybe have the burp suit on and the intercept on, of course, I always forget to turn that off. So let us load the page right now. It asks us for using a password. It is admin admin, admin, click here on log in, don't save. And you, what you want to go on is the access reflected and access stored. Now, the stored access is basically, uh, how would I say this? The injected code is saved on the web server or in the database. An application will show it to every user that visits the page. The goal of stored access is to infect every visitor of the website. It is the most dangerous type of the access. Why is it the most dangerous? Because uh, it is basically an attack on the website itself. And if you send a code, it will be saved on the website and it will send the same page to everyone who requires that website. Now, the reason that is dangerous is because you, as for example, a victim could just be visiting that website and run my JavaScript code and Basically, I could exploit your web browser or anything that I've written in that code right there. Or it could be just a simple message that is usually left to let someone know that they're vulnerable to the cross-site scripting attack. Now, the reflected XSS, instead, in, instead of sending the script to the server as in stored attack, the reflected attack is linked with JavaScript that we send to the victim. So. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So let us go to the access reflected. And as we can see right here, it will ask us what's your name. Now, this is the example of interactive web page. So if we type here, our name is John and we submit that, you can see that right here it will type hello John. Now we can see the source of the code, which of course on the normal websites, you won't be able to see it but we don't really need it right here. You can test this on any website that you are pen testing to see if it is vulnerable to the cross-site scripting attack. And that would be simply to type here a script. Let me just, so this arrow then script, then you close that arrow, then alert, open parentheses, parentheses, then then apostrophe and then for example let's type here hello then close the apostrophe then close the parentheses then this arrow once again slash and then script and then close this arrow so if we submit this and it you will see that it shows us a window that says hello and as easy as that we now know that this uh this page is vulnerable to the cross-site scripting attack. Since we were able to send a part of JavaScript code and the page interpreted it as the part of the server code. So I'm not really sure. Let me just go right here and back to here. Yeah, it won't be showing us that once again. So that was the example, the easy example of the reflected uh, cross-site scripting attack. Now you can do that. You can run some malicious code, but let's use the same code once again. And once you click here, submit, you can copy this link right here and send it to anyone. So let's just say, for example, this link, and you send that to over an email or over messenger or any other social media application and someone clips, clicks on this link. So they go, I will just copy and paste it since I don't have anyone to send it to and they click the link you will notice that it will run the same window for them 
even though they didn't type anything in here. So basically anyone that visits this link will run this JavaScript code within their page. Now this code is not malicious, so it doesn't really do anything, but it could be malicious. For example, it could steal cookies, for example, and hijack a session with that. Now you might say, well, this uh, link right here looks really suspicious and that is true, but there are lots of websites on the internet that shorten the link or change the link so that you cannot recognize anything in the link itself. So that could be another option. Now that's about it for the uh, reflected cross-site scripting attack and we will continue with the cross-site scripting in the next lecture. I hope I see you there and take care. Bye.